Hi everyone, in this video you are going to learn about super buffers. Super buffers are second type of uh, devices which are used to driving large capacitive loads. In the previous video I have discussed about cascaded inverters which is used for the driving large capacitive load uh, where we have taken multiple number of inverters that are in cascaded and each inverter when we are going forward when you are moving forward each inverter will be having the width ratio will be incremented by a factor f okay later we have calculated the delay associated with that this is what we have seen in the previous case now the second case which is used to drive very large capacitance loads in the cmos logic circuitry is super buffer <coughs> yes super buffer so super buffer is nothing but here we are taking a driver with n type logic circuit that may be an nmos inverter that may be a nmos inverter followed by another nmos inverter that gives a buffer stage okay inverter followed by another inverter that gives you a buffer inverter followed by another inverter that gives you a buffer stage nothing but input is equal to output with improved gain in such a way here we have taken a two nmos inverters in cascade those NMOS inverters, we know how the NMOS inverter is going to be created with depletion mode in the pull up and enhancement mode in the pull down. Okay, so to drive significant capacitive loads, to drive significant. capacitive loads we use super buffers we use super buffers to preserve to preserve symmetric switching transients symmetric switching transients that means 0 to 1 transition and 1 to 0 transition both must be same 0 to 1 transition how much it takes the time and as well as the logic level in the ret in return from 1 to 0 it takes the same amount of time and as well as voltage level so this is what the uh, very important feature of this super buffers the way we are going for the super buffers now see this here totally there are four different transistors we are using this is inverter one and this one is inverter two okay suppose if zero is the input this will be the one and again one passing through this inverter again zero so whatever input we are giving the same we are getting so that's why it is a buffer now see this t1 and t2 t1 is the enhancement mode transistor like t3 t3 is also an enhancement sorry sorry depletion mode transistor so t1 and t3 these two are depletion mode transistors where channel is created already whereas t2 and t4 are enhancement mode transistors there is no channel based on the input the channel is created now t1 t2 comprise enhancement mode n mos inverter enhancement mode n mos inverter with depletion mode n mos acting as pull up device or pull up transistor the output of inverter drives the gate of t3 the output of inverter 1 drives the gate of T3 drives the gate of C. See, the output of the first one, the output of 
this first inverter is again given to the input of the second inverter. Here this drives the gate of the transistor T3 and original input drives the gate of T4. See actually the output of this one is given to directly the output is connected to the input of this transistor T4 and the gate input whatever we are connecting at the T1 the same input we are connecting at the T3 and <coughs> original input drives the gate of T4 drives the gate of T4. Suppose for example consider a case consider a case <coughs> Vn is equal to a high logic level, nothing but VDD. Vn is equal to logic high level, nothing but VDD. So, inverter output is low which pulls down the gate of T3 to 0 volts. See, when you are giving logic high, nothing but 1 here, this makes the transistor T2 to be on and T1 becomes off because uh, already it is in on but because when this transistor T2 is on, on state even if the transistor T1 is in on that output is directly the input signal whatever the coming from VDD directly goes the current flowing through this one and directly enters into the T2 and it will be grounded. So even if the transistor is in on state here there is no use the output simply becomes logic 0. Okay. So now the output whatever we are giving that 0 is therefore that makes the transistor T3 turned off but T4 again turned on. See here inverter output inverter output is low which pulls down the gate of T3 to 0 volts thereby T3 is turned off but T4 is turned on but T4 is on. Hence, the output of super buffer is rapidly pulled down through T4. Hence, the output of super buffer rapidly pulls down through transistor T4 ok. So, consider a second case like where V input is equal to the case low nothing but V0 volts or VDD sorry VSS 0 volts or VSS. So, inverter output that makes the first inverter inverter output is high because the input is low that makes the output of the first inverter becomes high. Original input turns off, original input turns off the pull down transistor. T4, but high output of the inverter, high output of the inverter turns on the pull up transistor T1. 
P3. Thus, the output of super buffer is thus the output of super buffer is rapidly pulled down rapidly pulled down rapidly pulled up because this transistor becomes off the bottom transistor becomes off so it is pulled up through T3 through transistor T3 that means in the conventional inverter under pull up condition uh, whatever the voltage like VDD suppose if you are giving VDD by 2 is applied at the gate of the pull up transistor so in case of sober buffer the same VDD is being applied to the gate of the pull up transistor T3 that's why T3 transistor comes into on state so hence in the second case of this pull up transistor is being turned on twice as hard as the conventional case friends pull up is twice as rapid this helps symmetric output transients okay so when we are having uh, these transitions so like pull up and pull down transitions we as we have discussed in the case 1 and case 2 this will have a symmetric transient outputs this is about uh, super buffers with inverting nmos transistors suppose if you are taking non inverting transistors like super buffers super buffers non inverting non inverting type nmos non inverting type nmos so it is same as the inverting type except that the inverter output is cross coupled see here see the structure difference between the first one and second one the output of inverters are cross coupled between uh, t3 and t4 see the, the output of this t1 is directly connected to the t3 there and t2 is directly connected to t4 there but now the output of T1 is given to T4 and T2 is given to T3. So T, these two inverters, these two inputs are altered. Okay. It is same. It is same as inverting type except that the inverter output is cross coupled to T3 T4 pair T3 and T4 pairs. Hence, when Vn is equal to high, the output of the buffer output of the buffer is being pulled up throw T3 output of the buffer is pulled up throw T3 <coughs> when input is equal to low when V in is equal to low output is being pulled down being pulled down through T4 thus V in is equal to high thus V in is equal to high gives buffer output that is equal to high and V in is equal to low gives output is equal to low this is what the buffer meaning 
okay so in this way we can uh, use two different types of these super buffers with the inverting and non-inverting type as buffers that's that makes the signal to be driven with a high capacitor loads okay that means it reduces the delay as the, these are buffers buffer increases the speed of the signal and as well as it improves the gain so that's why it may avoid the delay problems associated with the uh, driving large capacitor loads in the next video i will explain about a third type of see a high capacitance drivers which is nothing but bi cmos drivers thank you